Hey Siri, what's the score in the Raiders game? Panther people, what up? Let's talk about it. Baker Mayfield is cooked. What's going on? You watch Panthers post to Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining. Well, Panthers lose 13 to 3. Don't register a touchdown if you're doing the math at home. Let's give the flowers first of all to the defense. I think I said in the last episode that this is almost like the Panthers coming off a mini bye by playing on Thursday, then playing Sunday afternoon. They had a little bit more time off. I thought the defense would have a lot of gas going into this game because of that extra time. It's not super hot, obviously, in Baltimore now that we're very well into fall, even though here in Canada we got tons of snow at the moment. Shout out to everyone in South Buffalo, by the way, getting way more snow than us at the moment. I uh, hope everyone's okay there. Um, but I knew the defense was going to be coming out firing. I didn't think they were going to be this good, historically good, against the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore not scoring a touchdown for the first time since 2015 in the first three quarters of the game. That has not happened to them, as I just said. Since 2015, they were held out of the end zone. It was just the Justin Tucker show until uh, 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 Lamar Jackson scampered into the end zone. Uh, which we'll, get a, we'll talk a little bit more about how he got to that point. But the Panthers' defense played absolutely awesome. Like guys like Bravion Roy contributing with a pick and a nice little run too. He had a little bit, a little bit of a cutback and try to try to get some yards out of that. Shout out to him. I know he's a Matt Rule guy, but he's proven that he could maybe stick around on this team. Uh, he he played awesome. J.C. Horn playing great as well. I know he's getting a little bit of a knock that. He's kind of routinely on the injury list, but kind of like how Christian McCaffrey would, as he joked while he was with the Panthers, he could go take a piss and he'd somehow end up on the injury list. So J.C. Horn, I feel like they just have to put him on the injury list because it, the word injury is different than hurt. I think he's always a little bit banged up. That's just I think it's just a formality. I think he's actually fine, but they have to say, hey, if your ribs are hurt a little bit, you got to put him on. But no, he's not actually banged up. Um, but I thought he played great. Back-to-back great games with him. Open field tackle against Lamar Jackson as a corner. Like that is normally the, the odds aren't in your favor in that situation. So shout out to him for playing so great. As I said in the previous episode, you have to take away what Lamar does best, and that's run. And he had just under 35 yards rushing. What was it? Yeah, Lamar Jackson... 31 yards rushing with the touchdown, but we'll talk about how he got to that point. Um, but LeVar Jackson, just 31 yards rushing. He had uh, 209 yards passing, so they were forcing him to pass the ball. And again, didn't really blow up the stat sheet there either. I have faith in our defensive backfield without Dante Jackson. First game without him since he's on season-ending IR with the Achilles injury. So I thought the defense played absolutely lights out. Brian Burns, lots of pressure. I don't think he registered a sack. Uh, but I thought, you know, I thought everyone else picked up the slack. And, you know, they can only do so much. Like, if Baltimore scoring 13 points, you should be winning that game. But it's the offense, which is the weakest link with Baker. It's just anemic. It's inept. It's happening. Like, Baker Mayfield, 196 yards passing. Two interceptions. I know they're not entirely his fault. Their one was. Why is he passing 33 times? Uh, Dante Foreman. I, I don't understand this. 11 rushes. 11 rushes. 11 rushes for 24 yards. I just... Having Baker, again, passing on first and second down, doing the opposite of what the Panthers should have been doing. That they have. It's like they forget. It's like it's like they forget they they play Atlanta. That's the only team they're allowed to rush, uh, you know, thirty plus times with Deontay Foreman and company. But Deontay Foreman to get eleven carries is criminal. Uh, Baker Mayfield doesn't have this live arm, and it was just such a bummer and, and deflating because you had just seen a team that won last week against Atlanta off the back of Deontay Foreman and their run game, and then giving the quarterback easy throws. And that was a recipe for success. There was no inclement weather here. The Panthers scored touchdowns with hurricane force rain. But in a clear sunny day in Baltimore, they can't score a touchdown because they're making their quarterback the focal point of their offense. And it makes no sense because he doesn't deserve that kind of respect. It should have been the Deontay Foreman show. It wasn't the Foreman show. It was the Bake show. And it's overcooked. It's burnt. I don't, he should not be playing for the Panthers for the rest of the year. I, I, I'm very surprised by the fourth quarter that Sam Darnold was not in there at quarterback for the Panthers. Can't, like, first of all, he's being set up to fail because he's being asked to throw the ball that many times, and he's just not that guy right now. Maybe it, maybe a change of scenery next year, it happens, but it, he's just not that guy. And, if, man, if you're DJ Moore, you got to be so upset. You had a bit of a spark a little bit uh, with P.J. Walker, especially in that first Atlanta game, but with, with Baker... I think all of his sizzle is on the sideline. That's just what it is. The headbutting without the helmet, all that stuff. But on the, on the field, he's just, he's not playing great. Not playing great at all. And, and for all the draft heads out there like yours truly, doesn't look great that the first overall pick gets 
played the way he played against the 32nd overall pick in Lamar Jackson. But yeah, I would not be surprised. Um, Steve Wilkes says he's not committed to not saying anything about who's starting against Denver next week, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Sam Darnold, just how we're going to end the year and end this season uh, in, in the Sam Darnold wagon, which started this pain train last year. And so I guess we just deserve it because we didn't draft Justin Fields. I got to say stuff about Shy Smith. My God, this guy is a off-season wonder, preseason wonder, great story, South Carolina guy. Shout out to you, Gamecocks, for beating Tennessee. Shout out to Hendon Hooker. Hopefully he's all right after that ACL tear. It's not looking good for him at all. Um, side note, I don't think he gets drafted. And if he does get drafted, it's late. And because he's not going to be ready for a year. So at the end of next football season. So anyone who's going to draft him knows that they might be bottoming out again. And, you know, he might be 26, 27 years old by the time he's fully healthy. So I don't know if it's worth it, but that's super shitty. Um, but Shy Smith. When he catches the ball, it's great, but that's rare. And so if you are going to be in an offense that's not cooking right now, and the game is so tight because of the defense, you cannot afford to make mistakes. And not only did he fumble the ball, it was the fumble and fumble recovery that led to Lamar Jackson scoring that touchdown. And I don't I don't know what the depth chart says, but the last time I checked, he was ahead of Terrace Marshall Jr., and that should not be the case anymore. It should be DJ, Terrace, Rashad Higgins, give that guy a goddamn shot. What is going on? And then Shai Smith, I, I honestly don't know if Shai Smith will make the team next year. Drafting a wide receiver 100% has to happen in the first three rounds, especially if we have two first-round picks, um, two, two second-round picks, sorry. I don't see him being on the team next year. It's super sad because uh, I thought he was St Steve Smith 2.0 uh, in terms of his ability to make tough catches, uh, tough after the run. But, man, if you saw in the super slow-mo how he's holding that ball, <sighs> Brutal. Absolutely brutal. How do you guys feel about this game? It is what it is. What, what you, let me know how you feel about this game. Uh, are you are you full on looking at the draft now? Uh, I will be having a midweek episode where maybe I might just focus on the quarterbacks. I got to watch some of the film from this Saturday. But again, Anthony Richardson makes a lot of those eye-popping throws, eye-popping moves. And, and, and then C.J. Stroud... Not not entertaining. We'll talk about that midweek. Appreciate you guys. If you're new here, like, subscribe, spread the word. See you midweek.